Can you tell me about the placebo effect? What is it? The placebo effect is interesting, both historically and its mechanisms. The placebo effect really was publicized as a result of a paper, I think, in 1955 by somebody named Beecher called The Powerful Placebo. And he didn't do any new research, but he evaluated existing literature and he showed that for a variety of treatment modalities, about a third of the, for a variety of different disease states, about a third of the people that don't get treated get better. Mm. Mm -hmm. And that's the widely cited statistic where about 30 or 33 percent of people who get a placebo get better. So what do you mean by a placebo? What's, what's a placebo? A placebo, well, a placebo can be anything. It could be a, if, if the treatment is a, is a drug, a placebo can be something that looks like the drug but doesn't contain the active ingredient. If the treatment consists of the uh, application of a machine like a hearing aid, a placebo would be an in effect, you know, a, a something that looks like that hearing aid, not turned on, it, but not turned yeah, on. Yeah, I see. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, so how does the place, how does the placebo effect work? What's the mechanism that, well, that, that allows you to somehow I'm have the, a physiological yeah. reaction even though there is no active drug or substance? Well, we, when you say have a physiological reaction, the placebo effect is based on the patient's report of them feeling better. And that's to be distinguished from a physiological reaction. Mm -hmm. Although there are occasional isolated reports, there are really not good studies that have stood up to replication that said that a placebo can have a physiological f effect in terms of producing tumor regression, mm -hmm. for example. Mm -hmm. Or it, rather, placebo effects are seen primarily in two areas. Analgesia, that is pain, pain relief, yeah. the patient reports that they're in less pain, right. and depression. The patient reports it to less depression. And these are all kinds of private symptoms. They're only available to the patient. They're not available to anybody else outside the patient. And so the patient has to report on them. Uh, in terms of public symptoms, um, uh, blood pressure, or asthma symptoms and things like that, placebo effects are much less pronounced. So let, me, let me tell you about an interesting study that was done recently where uh, patients who had asthma uh, had a, there's a drug that's, that's effective called albuterol, and if patients get albuterol, you can demonstrate that the symptoms are released by changes, for example, in respiratory volume. So if you give half, half your patient, well, they gave a third of the patients nothing, a third of the patients an albuterol inhaler, and a third of the patients a placebo inhaler that didn't have the active drug in it. And the patients that got the placebo inhaler reported they felt as good as the patients that got the mm -hmm. actual active ingredient inhaler, and both of them did better than the patients who got nothing. Mm -hmm. But if you actually measure respiratory volume, it was only the patients who got the active albuterol inhaler that perform better. So if the patient says they feel better, that's usually taken as evidence of the placebo effect. But often, if you measure whether they get better, and if you have some physiological index, like respiratory parameters, mm -hmm. then, then you will find that there is no placebo effect. Well, what does, it, what does it mean for something to be a real effect, though? So how would you react to someone mm -hmm. who said, well, um, even though you feel or you're reporting yeah. you have less depressive symptoms, yeah. you don't really have less depressive symptoms because I gave you a placebo. But that seems strange because I do have less. I am actually reporting you're feeling you're reporting. less. Well, and that people make mistakes, and their mistakes are understandable. Even with the best diagnostic procedures, physicians that do appendix appendix surgery are going to do unnecessary surgery 10 to 20 percent of the time. Hmm. Because, because, because they don't want to make the type of they error don't, which exactly. is Exactly. There are two types of mistakes. Yeah. And one type of mistake is horrendous. That is missing an affected yeah. appendix. The, under, the other type of mistake, that, that would be a, a, a false negative. The other type of mistake, a false positive, where the patient 
doesn't really have appendicitis, but you do the surgery. Well, that's pretty bad. You're doing unnecessary surgery, but it's not as bad as missing an inflamed appendix. Mm -hmm. So the phys we understand the physician can make a false positive errors when, when considering the costs and benefits of the different types of, of errors that they make. Well, now th the patient is in pain and gets a drug yeah. and, or gets a, a substance which the physician uh, assures the patient will alleviate the pain. Well, it's just like the physician had a hard time diagnosing the appendicitis, the patient has a hard time mm -hmm. deciding whether the pain or the depression or whatever is better or not. They have, the pain is fluctuating in intensity. They have to somehow compare the current level of pain with some presumably arithmetic mean of the, of the pain in the recent past and how recent yet, past. Yet. So it's a very difficult decision to make. The patient, if the patient in fact gets an inert substance but doesn't know that, doesn't know whether they get an inert substance or placebo, then if they make one type of mistake, they'd be, dis they, suppose they actually got an active ingredient and if they said, I don't feel better, they'd be disputing the, the expertise of the physician they might be um, uh, labeled a complainer. They might be prolonging their stay in the so hospital. So there are pressures on the patient to there are respond positively. That's right. Positively. So a placebo effect for a patient is a false positive response. And it's that is mistakenly saying, I feel better when I don't feel better. Mm -hmm. And it's as understandable as a false positive response that the clinician makes in diagnosing appendicitis in the patient. That's interesting. You said before that a placebo can be anything. Yeah. Uh, are there any factors that affect the strength of a placebo well, I, effect? I, I guess if the patient is more and more convinced that the substance that they get might be one with active ingredients because, for example, it's very expensive or it's, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, comes from a bottle that looks like an orthodox medicine bottle yep. rather than... Or a big syringe. Or, that that's you right, yes, yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah okay, so but I don't want you to think that... that, that, that all placebo effects are simply false positive response. In fact, most of them, and all of them in Beecher's case in 1955, are explained by a much simpler mechanism, which is simply regression to the mean. That is, most people that are sick report, a, approach a clinician, seek treatment mm -hmm. when they're sickest. Yeah. And most people who are sick get better. They'll get better anyway. My name is Shep. I think about anticipation. Mm -hmm.